In March of 2018, a self-driving car struck and killed a 49-year-old woman in Tampa, Arizona. The vehicle was part of a test program by the taxi company Uber and operated autonomously at the time of the crash. A safety operator in the car did not pay attention to the road and failed to intervene, but even if she had, it is unlikely that she could have avoided the collision. The tragic event brought new focus to self-driving car programs, which at the time had been running without much attention from the public. It raised questions about the safety of autonomous vehicles and on who would bear responsibility in the face of an accident. Uber's self-driving car program and that of competitors like Waymo and Lyft meanwhile continue to expand. If their bets pay off and autonomous vehicles see widespread adoption, it would change the taxi industry forever. This video imagines what such a disruption would look like. It explores the challenges that exist for the industry, how self-driving taxis would impact cities, and what the ethical implications are when the decision-making of human drivers is replaced by an algorithm. The promise of self-driving cars has captured our imagination for decades. And it's easy to see the appeal. Who wouldn't want to spend their commute watching a film, playing games with friends, or having a cocktail? without someone in the driver's seat having to pay attention to the road. Today, businesses around the world are working to make this dream a reality. From startups in China to Silicon Valley behemoths like Google and Apple, companies explore how to bring self-driving cars into our lives. The taxi industry is on the forefront of this development. Waymo, Uber, Lyft and other players are spending billions of dollars on the bat that consumers will want to get into the back of a self-driving taxi just as much as they appreciate the convenience of being picked up by a human driver. Businesses operating in the space are taking a big risk, but it could pay off. Human drivers are the biggest cost factor for taxi companies, and eliminating their role entirely would alter the economic model of the industry. Consumers could also benefit because, as some argue, the decrease in cost and increase in effectiveness would lower prices overall. In addition to businesses, governments have shown to be enthusiastic about self-driving cars. Parliaments in Germany, the United States and Singapore, among other countries, have changed their laws to allow for the testing of autonomous vehicles on public roads. They are attracted by economic potential, but there is also another promise. Proponents believe that widespread adoption of self-driving cars could dramatically reduce the number of traffic accidents and road deaths. While there is no way to confirm the validity of that claim, at least on the surface it appears plausible. 94% of traffic accidents are caused by human error, and while self-driving cars may have other faults, they are not known for drunk driving, texting, sleepiness or other human behaviour that typically causes the most severe accidents. Fully autonomous vehicles that function on any road and in all weather conditions may not be a reality for decades to come. But the technology is making progress. By combining inputs from high-resolution sensors called LiDAR with real-time mapping data, self-driving cars today function well in small, geofenced areas. This makes the technology a perfect candidate for taxi services, which typically operate in dense areas like city centers. The Uber crash server shows that even the most advanced test programs for self-driving cars have hurdles to clear before they can compete with today's fleet of human-powered vehicles. One of the hardest problems in vehicle automation is to define how self-driving cars should act and react in critical situations like the moment before an unavoidable crash. Humans have innate reflexes as well as complex moral values that guide their decision making while driving. This is impossible to replicate with autonomous vehicles and a new set of rules must be established. Multiple scenarios are plausible. The German car maker Daimler-Benz has argued that a car with self-driving capabilities should be programmed to always and foremost protect its occupants. This seems intuitive and surveys confirm that potential buyers would prefer such an approach. But it could also produce situations in which a vehicle steers into a group of pedestrians to avoid an obstacle and shield the car's occupants from harm. Others have argued that autonomous vehicles should act utilitarian to minimize human suffering even when occupants would be at risk. This appears more humane but would be difficult to implement and could hurt ridership numbers. 
The discussion around the decision-making capabilities of self-driving cars is ongoing. It centers around the philosophical question of how much control over human life, if any, we should relinquish to what are essentially robots on wheels. Self-driving taxis could produce another unintended side effect, traffic congestion. Studies have shown that Uber and Lyft have made traffic in cities worse, and autonomous taxis would likely exacerbate the problem. Some measures, like separate traffic lanes for self-driving cars and connected traffic control systems, could lessen the impact and potentially even provide a net positive over the status quo. But they would require massive investments in infrastructure, which is unlikely to take place, at least initially. Even if the issues around decision-making and traffic congestion are successfully cleared, there are more roadblocks that could slow or even halt the development of self-driving taxis. Adoption by customers, for example, may be below the optimistic predictions of the industry. The public's view of self-driving cars is fairly negative as it stands, and an event like a successful hacking attack could provoke more skepticism. Finally, as with all new developments in automation, there is the question of what would happen with the millions of drivers whose livelihoods depend on their jobs, and who would quickly become obsolete if self-driving taxis would see widespread adoption. To see how stakeholders navigate the questions raised in this video will be one of the most interesting developments in technology in the coming years. The debate around self-driving cars has become more heated as the technology comes closer to production quality. And I'm curious to see the arguments play out when Waymo, Uber or another company ultimately leaves the better phase and autonomous taxis become available to the wider public. I believe that the potential of the technology is real and could have major upsides over the status quo, especially when it comes to making transportation safer for all of us. However, the downside risks are also considerable, and any business operating in this space should set clear expectations for what they can and cannot deliver. Otherwise, a certain PR nightmares could spell doom for self-driving taxis before they have ever really taken off.